This is what I want to tell you, some relevant basics of sexual function, how sexuality can be negatively influenced by diseases, in this case by kidney diseases and by cancer, and then focus first on the kidney disease and then focus on the cancer, and then a little bit on dealing with sexuality, how, how to work with that. First a little bit, uh, some basics of sexual function, that is, uh, we do as if it is a real science with a graph. This is the male, the other one is the female. Uh, there is a lot of difference uh, between male and female, which we usually do not address. That is, in Holland we are very advanced in sexuality education. We are in the world, we have more or less the best numbers in uh, the age that people are coming out in the as STD, we have very low numbers, we have very low numbers in teenage pregnancy, but we still have not very well addressed the difference between male and female. And in sexuality, that's continuously playing uh, in, in that field, the differences. We have three major uh, areas in sexuality, or may, uh, let's call it three major phases. The first is the desire, the second is the arousal, the third is uh, orgasm or ejaculation. And in every phase it's different for men and for women. If you bring it back very much to the basics, which is important, uh, especially if you look into sexual function for medical people, if you look to what diseases are doing and what medical interventions are doing, then you can say that desire is especially something with hormones. Excitement, uh, arousal, that's erection and lubrication, that is something which is of circulation, is, is effect of circulation. And the third one is very important, the neurologic system should be okay and the neurotransmitters should be okay. It, it's a very simplification, but it's sometimes it helps very much to understand things. I want to go into the three different phases. What do you need in each of those phases? In the first one, in the desire phase, the most important thing what you need is the testosterone, uh, which is the hormone for the man, let's say the fuel for male desire, but also the fuel for female desire. Men make the testosterone in the testes, 95%, and in the adrenal glands, 5%. Women make the testosterone in the ovaries for 50%, and in the adrenal glands for 50%. So testosterone is for both very important. Here you see uh, the difference in amount, which is in men, of course, much higher. Uh, and you see in the women that it starts already quite early, even before uh, girls get into puberty. That is why some girls already start masturbating at age eight or nine. And when you are out of the uh, menopause, then it still continues, the ovaries continue a little bit to make, uh, to make the testosterone. So it's not going down as fast as, in, as with the estrogens. That means that even at age 80, a woman still has sufficient testosterone to have sexual desire, which is uh, strange for young people because a lot of young people believe that sex is only for the young, the healthy and the beautiful, but it continues as well for aged people. And one of my famous patients that was a man who came, he was 83 years of age, and he came uh, alone, he was married for 61 years, and he I said, tell me, he said, yeah, my wife has sent me for Viagra. I said, oh, why did she send you? Yes, uh, she has read about the Viagra, and I don't get a good erection, so she has sent me to ask for Viagra. She had fallen down half a year before and uh, she broke her hip and so she was admitted in the hospital, got operation and operation in fact was going well but she was very reacting to the, the anesthesia and she got in the night, she was very wild and she was falling 
uh, out of bed and broke her other hip and piece of her pelvis. So instead of being home after two weeks, it took five or six months before she was home. And he didn't do anything during the five or six months that she was in the hospital. So he didn't masturbate. And if you don't do anything at age 83, use it or lose it, and he lost it. And she came back home and she wanted to restart sex and he couldn't get an erection and she didn't like that because she loved it very much. So I asked him, could you tell me how was it before your wife went to the hospital? And then his face opened, became very bright. He said, you know, no more children at home and no job. So <laughs> cuddling we could do every day, but having intercourse only two or three times a week. She was 81 and she wanted that. So be careful, there is no age limit. But of course, there is a lot of limit because of diseases. When you grow older, you get more diseases and then you get more problems. Okay, why do we need the testosterone? We need it for desire to get horny, to get real aroused. We need it for the strength of our orgasm, especially in the women. We need it for assertiveness, that is also dependent on testosterone. And we need it for physical strength, that means uh, if you don't have enough testosterone, you are very quickly, you are tired. And we need it also for our mood and well-being. That is one of the things where you can see the difference in uh, depression. Men with a much higher testosterone have in average in my country between 18 and 65, you have about 11% risk for depression for the men and women, 20%. It's nearly double the amount. And that it, you, you can see that also in uh, treating some depressions, you can do that even with testosterone. So it's very important for mood as well. And of course, bone mass, muscle mass, especially for the people in rheumatology and in orthopedics, that's very important. But also, I think in uh, the kidney patients, it's also important, your muscles and your testosterone. Now, what do you need for erection or lubrication? That is, the, it's a very complex system what we have inside the genital machine, in the, inside the sexual machinery, with a lot of uh, neurotransmitters and a lot of uh, vessels will open and vessels will close. But it's very much a circulatory system. Now, when you get aroused, you get uh, a full penis, and then after that, the penis gets uh, um, blocked into a capsula and then you get a hard penis. In the women, you don't have a capsula around. So in the women, it's, it, the vessels are around the vagina. That means that the vagina, you get a fluid which transudates through the vaginal wall into the vagina, which you need on the one hand for the fertility because uh, spermatic cells they need the proper fluid to swim. And normally in your vagina, your pH is low. And when you get aroused, your pH goes to uh, seven, new, very neutral. That is the good system for the spermatic cells to swim. If it's too, too acid, then they stop swimming. But in the rest of the time, you have to have it acid. If not, you get too many infections. So. That is one. The other thing is for the mechanical things. Sex is in fact, the intercourse is a piston in a cylinder and the cylinder has to be oiled. And that's the lubricative fluid, what you make when you get sexually aroused. If not, the cylinder burns or you will have pain. Now, what do you need for that? Of course, proper circulation and good arousability, that's what happens in your brain. Uh, in your brain you have uh, receptors for the testosterone which take care that you can really get horny. And also you need the good neural pathways uh, to guide the circulation. The third, what do you need for orgasm or ejaculation? That's especially the good neural pathways and the good neu neurotransmitters. That is uh, specifically for orgasm very important. Now what you need in all phases, is that me? <laughs> it's the same what I use sometimes when I give a workshop, then uh, 
the same signal. <laughs>